Hi, this is Glenda. This is my third market project and uh, I thought I'd make these little scented pincushion hats. These ones are lavender. Um, it's another one inspired by Tracy Marsh's book Touch of Nostalgia and it is Touch of Nostalgia this time. Um, I used to make quite a lot of these and sorry I'm just getting to the page. Um, she had this little hat and hers is considerably bigger than what I've done. Um, I think we tend to like the miniature things nowadays. Um, and one of the biggest differences is that um, we didn't have all the gorgeous trims available that we've got now. The, the laces and ribbons and that were pretty basic. Uh, certainly not all these plastic pearl trims that we've got now. Um, I don't know if you can see, I've got all these patterns and things from projects I used to make. I was asked about showing all the pages and honestly it, a lot of it's the same thing like you cover a fan, you make a cardboard frame and cover it, you, you make a box and cover it, lining a basket, um, I mean there, there's some more of these frames, adding flowers to things, it's all pretty much the same thing, um, it's, it's not like I did a number of these covered fans um, and they're, they're very pretty for putting on a dresser um, covered toilet roll holders I mean I'm not sure but I I haven't seen anything like that for a long time lined baskets um, it is a lot of variations on the same thing um, I have seen these for, sh for sale in op shops and things but it was an Australian book and uh, it may not be available overseas, I don't know. It was from 1985, this one. Um, it might have been the reprinted in 85, it's from 1984. Um, but I wouldn't stress too much if you can't get hold of them. When it says touch of nostalgia, it is, it's nostalgia. And I mean, out of the three books, I've got two projects that I'm going to do um, and yeah so anyway the original pin cushion as I say was probably this big um, and I wanted to pad mine the original ones weren't padded so on this one I used wadding and it's it's a bit too chunky um, so on this one I had uh, I have no idea where I got it from but it's sort of like a thin foam with a nylon coating on it but any thin foam would do. I, I do like the look of it being a little bit padded. Uh, I mean, here's the same thing, and they, they look fairly different to each other. So I'll show you how to do uh, that, even though there are other tutorials. Fiona's done similar things. Sorry, that's Jennings 644. has done similar things in the past. It's a very old idea. I suspect they've been doing it since at least Victorian times, if not earlier. Um, but we'll have a go and uh, see what happens. Okay, before I stick anything on my circle, you need a circle of card. You can make these any size you like. You can make them bigger or smaller, whatever you want. Uh, this one is three and three quarter inches, which is about nine and a half centimeters. Then you need uh, for the the outside piece of fabric, uh, six and three quarter inches or 17 and a half centimeters and for the centre bit uh, 5 inches or 12 and a half centimetres and it really doesn't have to be exact but I mean there's one big difference I cut those with circle dies that they didn't exist in 1984 <laughs> um, so it's, it's interesting how things have changed hoping the glue gun is hot I'm just going to stick this on around. I just think it softens the look. Cutting fabrics, making my craft scissors work very hard. I got these back at the time the books came out, um, Stay Sharp ones, which have their own Um, and I tried to get another one and the first thing that happened was that the jolly 
sharpening mechanism broke. It lasted no time whatsoever. So I was so disappointed that I couldn't replace them. The other thing about these is they're stitched. I was going to try and attach the fabric on the brim just with hot glue and I, when I thought about it I thought well I've got to stitch the other bit anyway and last time I tried avoiding stitching it was more effort than it was worth. So I've got a needle which I had intended to thread before I started but I didn't. Well this is something else I, from back in the 80s. I think we turned almost everything in sight into a pincushion and this one's a little walnut shell with a little piece of silk in it and I've, I've had it. It's been a favourite. I, I just love it for some reason but I don't think people sew anything like they used to um, but I just always found that a sweetie. We used to turn walnut shells into little mice and things and really seriously kitsch. Anyway, I will definitely fast forward this. It's simply a running stitch around a big circle of fabric to gather it up. So open it up so you can get your cardboard piece in. Try to get it reasonably even. Try not to unthread your needle. And you just need a stitch to stop your gathering undoing. advantage of using a needle with a really big eye that makes it easy to thread doesn't mean it also makes it very easy to come unthreaded. <coughs> okay, so there's my base, brim. You do the same thing with your middle circle. You want some wooden? It always takes more than you think. But I still have more than I need. So what you want to do is push it in and make a little nest in there to put lavender in. Want enough so that the lavender won't show through, but so that you can get enough lavender in so that you can still have a good scent. And if you 
had lavender puree for a while, you could always um, freshen it with oils and crush it in your hands and that helps a lot seal it up and let the oils sink in. Because when you buy it it's all loaded with oils, it's not the natural smell. Some of this actually came off my lavender bush which I no longer have since I moved. Sewing skills are very rusty. So I just want to make this nice and round and flatten it out. The original ones had lace around the outside, but I quite like the lace uh, around the top of the brim. So, just see what I've got that might work. so that it's, it reaches the edge of the brim. thing I did notice before you do this bit check that you've got oodles of glue because you want to add a whole lot of glue to this going out further than you would think because then you're going to push it on put it on and press as hard as you possibly can to get this top part as flat as you possibly can
Okay, so now it's just a case of on each of these, on this one I put a, a pearly um, chef, oh, what's that called? Organza type trim uh, and a couple of flowers and feathers and then the ribbon I just stuck it to the back basically. Um, on this one I used some eyelet lace I think it's called, put my ribbon through it and just a little flower on the back and I just once again stuck lace to the back for the hanger. I'm not entirely sure I like the stick pins but we didn't have stick pins when we made these before, you just put your ordinary pins in. Um, so anyway I will find some trims and I might either come back when it's done or fast forward it a lot, we'll see. Okay, so there's that one finished, and my other two, and now I'm racking my brains as to what on earth I'm going to do for my next project. Thanks for watching.